So I'm going to kick things off here with Bangkok Patna School. Um, just a little introduction about Bangkok Patna. It is Thailand's first and largest British international school for students from 2 to 18 years. The not-for-profit school has remained at the forefront of education in Thailand for over 60 years and is today one of the most respected educational establishments in Southeast Asia. They provide learning from foundation stage right through to senior studies for over 2,200 students from around 65 countries. And the school follows the English national curriculum up to year 11 and then the IB in years 12 through 13. I am excited to bring on the stage with me here, Miss Rachel Jones. And I will click the right Hi. buttons and we will all appear. All right, let's see. Can I, you know, this is something that we always want to do. There. there we go. Let's see. Can we get you to adjust your camera there? Excellent. I apologize. Fantastic. Hello, Rachel. How are you today? Stephen, thanks for having me. No, my pleasure. My, my pleasure to have you here. You know, Rachel, I, I, I just gave the official blurb for Patna, but is there anything else that you would, I'm going to... I'm going yeah, to go with this so that we can see you. There you go. That's a little better. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the stage here for just a few seconds. Say, was there anything else that you would add to that, you know, just sort of general statement that, that you put out to the public about Patina that you would put on the table before we kind of start the q and I think one thing I'd like to mention is that um, although we are the sort of the oldest British international school here in Bangkok, that doesn't mean that we are necessarily uh, traditional in everything that we do. So we are incredibly innovative um, in both the curriculum design, the campus design, and the way that we, we approach, approach learning. So I think, you know, something, if, if parents are interested in finding out more, please do get in touch. Uh, please do come and have a tour of the school and, you know, find out a little bit more about how it works here at Patana. Fantastic. So, you know, one of the questions that we, oh, Look at that. Scarlett Graham just comes right in there and, and just steals my thunder. But that's great. Do you offer A-levels? That's a great question. Uh, we actually offer the IB diploma program. Okay. So all of our students will take IGCSEs in year 11 and then move on to the IB. For, the final yes. for those of us who are per, perhaps don't even know the difference between IB and, and, and ICGSG, could you just sort of differentiate those a little bit? Or do, it, would it, you know, do, does the IB program allow somebody to go back to the British system or... Is it independent? So the IGCSE exams are the exams taken at the end of year 11 in the British system. Um, we find they dovetail very, very nicely with our senior studies program. So it's preparing students for taking those external examinations, um, really having that really solid foundation before they move on to those final two years of school. Uh, traditionally in the UK, that would have been A-levels, um, but more schools now are opting for the IB diploma. Fantastic. Do you have, you know, I, I encourage everyone, you know, I, I see you all in the room there. You're all there. You know, so, you know, if, if you do have a question for Ms. Jones, uh, please throw it in the chat there. We do see them and we'll, we're happy to respond to it. Um, Rachel, how, you know, characterize like, you know, where Patina sits within Bangkok in terms of um, its position in, in, in like just literally in, in, in its geography. Uh, you know, most of us are familiar with the traffic in Bangkok. Most of us, most of us are familiar with getting around. Um, I happen to be a Sukhumvit person, you know, up there. So how, how does that fit in and, and how has Patna thought about, you know, getting kids to and from school and those kinds of things? Okay. Thanks, Stephen. That's a really good question. And it's something that a lot of families ask us. Um, we are on the Southeast uh, of Bangkok. Uh, we are on Sukhumvit, but soy 105. Um, and I think something to, to be aware of, as people who've lived in Bangkok for a little while will know, it's not necessarily the number of kilometers that determine the length of the journey, but the exact location. So <laughs> for families who are living, you know, near an expressway, actually getting to Patana can be, you know, 20, 30 minutes. So most of our families do live along the second bit line, um, around sort of Asok, Prompong, um, that sort of area. We also have families living in Saturn. Um, mm -hmm. And again, if uh, families live near to the expressway, that journey can be as short as, you know, 20, 25 minutes in the morning. Okay, excellent. And uh, the is there a busing system that works as well, or is it? Yeah, so the, uh, a lot of our children will use our school shuttle bus service. So that's a door to door service. We uh, run that ourselves so we can manage really the, the quality and the cost as well. Um, so you have a minimum of, um, sorry, a maximum of uh, eight children per, per bus. So it's not going to, you know, 
a lot of different houses before it sets off to school. So you've got a few pickups and then it's straight to school on the expressway. Um, there's a bus monitor on every bus as well, um, supporting the children, making sure that everybody's you know, wearing their seatbelts, um, not leaving belongings on, on the bus and making sure it's a door-to-door -door service for especially those younger learners that they're literally handed over to the teacher. Uh, Absolutely. At school. Sure. And some families will use the BTS as well. So we're close to both Bering and Bangnard BTS stations. Fantastic. Daniel Green's put a question in the chat for us, which is what is your school doing to promote sustainability? So this is a, a big interest for us as a school. Um, we've had a huge solar panel project um, mm. happening over the last few years. That What was particularly exciting about that is that was a student-led project. Oh. So that was something actually our student environmental committee came up with um, to say, you know, how could we, we do more? We are a very large school. We use a lot of electricity. Um, what can we do to make that more sustainable? Um, so our students came, they, you know, did their research. They were supported by teachers. They came and presented to our board. Um, and then we moved forward with, um, you know, a very, very expansive program. So we've actually got the, the maximum uh, capability that we're permitted um, in terms of solar panels now. Wow. It, get, I, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to go down that rabbit hole here just a little bit. Like what what portion of the student body, you know, participated in that? And, and how does that work? Is there a, a specific class that's, you know, focused on environmentalism or is it an after school activity or is it, you know, just a student led group? They said, hey, look, we want to put something together and create an internal NGO or how does that work? So um, the, that is part of our global citizenship. So that would be something that would be woven into the learning from a very, very young age uh, for our children. And then we would have voluntary groups that students can join in both the primary and secondary schools, looking at different, different angles. Um, they would have, you know, we have waste less weeks in school and various initiatives. Again, they're student driven. Um, it's a good opportunity for, for student learning but it also, if the students are driving these initiatives, um, they're more likely to really be bought into by the whole student body. Mm. And then they can educate you know, parents and, and us as adults as well. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, that kind of takes me to that. Again, just want to remind everyone, if you're here, you know, uh, Ms. Rachel Jones is here. She is the head of admissions at, at Patton. She'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, one question that I always think about is, can you give me a balance between, uh, yeah, I love how you position is like, look, it's, this is the oldest school, Megan, but what doesn't mean that we're old, right? So do you, how do you answer questions from parents or how do you position the school in terms of facilities versus, you know, the, the, the teachers themselves versus the, um, you know, sort of the, the, the curriculum, like what, what's the balance there and where do you place emphasis in Patna? So the, our, we're incredibly blessed in terms of our facilities and the opportunities available in school, but those facilities are only ever going to be as good as the teaching and learning that takes place within them. So the, yeah, the curriculum, which is obviously forming the, the framework and the basis for, for what we're doing, um, and the teaching are of utmost importance. So really um, you know, recruiting the best teachers um, and investing in those teachers in, you know, ensuring that they continue to learn professionally uh, from each other, but also from external providers, um, that, that is really key. Uh, so we can make the most of, of these wonderful facilities we have. Otherwise, they're just rooms if they're not really <laughs> used to their full potential. Absolutely. Um, I just want to remind everyone, you're now watching the BKK Kids Live um, 2022 Virtual School Summit. I'm here with Miss Rachel Jones. She's the head of admissions at Patana, which is our first school that we're featuring today on, on our day of British schools. Um, Rachel, I want to kind of flip the script and, and put it on your table. Um, what is maybe the, the top one or two questions that parents ask you when they come, you know, and you're giving them the tour through the campus or one of your staff is giving them the tour or maybe, you know, the, the number the, the, like the top one or two questions that you have coming in via email, especially over, you know, the last sort of 18, 24 months is, you know, we're, we're dealing with COVID and these kinds of things. Yeah. So I think parents of uh, particularly younger children, which I imagine a lot of your audience um, will be here today. Um, will question whether they should put their child into a larger school you know from the outset or whether it's better to start in a, a smaller 
mm. you know, smaller school and then progress um, onwards. Now, obviously, that's very much an individual question, uh, depending on what's right for, for that particular child and that particular family. Um, but I'd say in general, something that, that if people haven't visited us, they might not know. Um, we operate very much as sort of schools within schools. So in our primary school, we have dedicated building for our nursery. So our two to three year olds have their own little building, their own playground, um, their own specialist facilities. Um, then foundation stage one and two are three to five year olds. Again, they have their own building. Uh, they have their own gymnastics gym, uh, all of those specialist facilities. Um, but they're operating within these smaller um, environments where children can really feel safe and secure and confident, yet they have the benefit of being part of a larger school. So they have access to specialist teachers, um, all of the sort of investment that goes into that, um, into the specialist facilities, and also the aspirational value of seeing older students who may come and interact with the younger kids sometimes, or they'll see them in assemblies. And there's that very, very powerful element of, wow, I want to do that one day. You know, I got, I just, I want to, kudos you on that particular one. Like I'm, everybody who's listened to, to me before, I mean, they know I've got three kids and just today, actually my eldest son performed in a band presentation and my middle son was in the audience, you know, it's sort of oh. like, it was really cool to kind of hear them talk over the dinner table saying, Hey, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, that, that, that was not only an interaction, but it was just a, a neat connection to have as well. Yeah. Um, Daniel Green asks again, what facilities does Patna have that makes the school stand out? Now you were just talking about special facilities and some of those other things, but maybe there's one or two uh, things that you'd like to point out. I think on a more general level, I would say the, the spaciousness and the greenery of our campus is something that's, that's really quite special. Um, so the way that we are laid out, we have um, a lot of land and we have, you know, those specialist facilities for each area. So we have a playground for each two year groups um, in the primary school. Um, we have great sports facilities, but we also have dedicated spaces such as our outdoor classroom, mm -hmm. um, where we've actually got, you know, a fully functioning little ecosystem um, in there that all of our students can, you know, right here on campus can go and experience um, you know, being in, in the rainforest um, and wow. doing the, the science and environmental studies. So I think that's something that's that's quite special, both in terms of those opportunities to, to access that, but also in terms of general well-being, of being around nature, having the fish and the turtles and the butterflies and the birds. I think when you're in living in a busy city like Bangkok, mm -hmm. um, that's really quite quite special. Yeah, and we've actually recently had some some talks with some neuroscientists about that that have really like hammered home the the importance of being connected with nature at all times. Um, it's just absolutely essential to the human psyche and the, and and you know our our neurodevelopment and those kinds of things. So that's really really great. Um, Eva Cohen asks, how much importance do you give to pastoral care as you are a big school? Yeah. So. Um it's particularly important being a big school that we do have um, those those systems and strategies in place to ensure that every child is is nurtured in school. Um, we have three sort of main values that that drive everything we do at school, which are well-being, learning, and global citizenship. Mm. And well-being is very deliberately put first because if our children don't feel happy and safe and secure at school for whatever reason. They're not going to learn effectively. They're not going to to grow and develop as as you know we would wish. Um, so that well-being really is at, at the center of, of everything we do. Um, in our primary school, each year group has a leader specifically focused on student welfare. Um, so that's something that that would have a, a big focus. Um, and in our secondary school, where um, as you know in the British system, students will start to move to subject specialists. Um, mm -hmm. for, for the different different lessons and to ensure that we have one teacher who's having that really um, in-depth overview of, of how a student is doing. So students will be in a tutor group and they'll have a dedicated tutor, a support tutor and a head of year who will move with them through the secondary school. Mm -hmm. So each year when they move up, that tutor and support tutor and head of year will move up with them. So although they will be interacting with a number of different teachers, they will have a really strong relationship and parents will have a strong relationship 
with these individuals um, who can really have that overall, you know, holistic um, concern for the student to make sure that, that they're doing well, they're happy um, and, and they're growing. Um, we obviously have specialists as well. So we have social and emotional counsellors who are available if students are struggling with anything. Um, and that's a really important resource there. I want to offer up anybody who has a final question here. We're going to like I said, time just goes by so quickly in these in these uh, blurbs that we have for each school. Um, but we have time for about one more question. I'd, I'd like to tee it up myself. Uh, you said that global citizenry is one of your key values that you look at there. Tell us about the intercultural and the the, the international makeup of, of Patna. How many how many different nationalities do you have represented, and um, how does that play out in the campus? So in terms of the student body, we currently have sixty one nationalities uh, represented. Um, and it is really a, a very diverse mix. I think um, internationalism has always been a very strong factor and a strong part of the school. Um, and, you know, it's an opportunity for students to, to learn from each other, to learn different perspectives um, and different values. Um, but we, we need to make sure that that goes deeper. It's not just about our International Day celebrations and, you know, everybody loves the food hall and the parade. Um, but it has to be embedded in the learning and we have to be asking, you know, those, those difficult questions about diversity and inclusion and make sure that it's really um, embedded in everything we do rather than just that at the surface level. So that's something that we you know, continue to look at um, to, to make sure we're really fulfilling that. Super fantastic. Miss Rachel Jones, Mrs. Rachel Jones, thank you so much. You're the head of admissions for Patina. Thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to speak with us today here on the virtual summit. Um, I'm going to now move on to the presentation for Patina. And then um, anybody who wants to contact you, I assume that they reach out to you directly or? Yes, please do contact me. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. And I wish you a great morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And now while I uh, move this around, I'm going to now share the presentation for Patina, and here we go. Before I push play, though, I'm going to make sure that we have Shazam. Hello, and a very warm welcome to Bangkok Patina School, Thailand's original British International School. We are a large, friendly, and truly international community with over 60 nationalities. Bangkok Patina offers students a unique breadth of opportunity, both within and outside the classroom, to ensure that each and every one of our learners reaches their full potential. Our primary students from nursery to year six follow a progressive British-based curriculum, which is adapted to engage, challenge, and excite them whether they are learning atomic theory or exploring in our outdoor classroom. In secondary, students follow the British curriculum until year 11, when they take IGCSE exams and then move on to study the IB Diploma Program. Students are supported by a strong pastoral system and a team of dedicated and inspiring teachers. A highlight for many of our students is our expansive extracurricular program with 500 activities running each week after school. These provide critical opportunities for students to follow their passions, establish friendships, and learn new skills. Our school values of well-being, learning, and global citizenship are at the heart of all we do. Our 50-acre campus is located in Southeast Bangkok and is easily accessible by BTS or our school shuttle service. As our school buses are usually moving against the traffic, the journey to school from popular residential locations such as Asok and Krompong take only around half an hour. We have a wonderful community here at Bangkok Patina. Do contact us if you would like to find out more.
Look at that. This whole time I've been talking to you and no one has heard anything I've said. <laughs> this is what's awesome about flying live, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just want to remind everyone that my name is Stephen Laddick. I'm the director here at BKK Kids. You have joined us or you are joining us for the 2022 Virtual School Summit. Today is our British School Day. We have uh, a, a, a host of fantastic schools. But right now I have with me Cindy and I, I want to say, is it Adair? Did I get that? All right. Did I get that correct? Sydney, uh, you are a, a sports and activity specialist. And we wanted to take a moment out, you know, uh, talking directly about the schools to talking about, you know, these special topics that everybody's uh, interested in. So I know that you've got some slides to share. So why don't you share your slides and take us away? Okay, we will do. Thank you. Okay, we're almost there. Thank you for bearing with me. Is that coming through okay? Yep, there you go. Wonderful. Okay, um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm just going to share today a little bit about um, extracurricular activities and sport, obviously through the lens of the school that I'm from, Bangkok Patana School. But um, really, when you're making a choice about a school for your child, this is something to really uh, check out and dig a little deeper into because it really can enhance their uh, academic experience at the school that you ultimately choose. So why participate in ECAs? That's the little uh, acronym I'm going to use today for extracurricular activities. Um, these are all the different things that our students tell us. Um, they're a great way to make friends and make those connections and socialize. Um, they are a great place to learn new skills. Uh, they do enhance college applications. Colleges are no longer looking for students who are one dimensional and only academic. They're looking for students who are involved in their community, who have um, other interests and um, who are really immersed in their education. Uh, it's a great way for your child to discover their passions. Not every child will find their passion in the, in the classroom immediately. So this helps them to dig a little deeper into some of the other bits and pieces that will enhance the curriculum further. Um, really important one, it helps them stay fit and healthy. So that's so the sports and activities that are a little bit more physical in nature. We know at the moment we've gone through a really difficult time with the global pandemic and mental health is coming into a spotlight. Children need to move, they need to socialize um, and extracurricular curricular activities can be a great vehicle to make sure that there's some time in every child's day where they can really focus in on that. Um, they help new students settle. Uh, when we have new admissions to our school, one of the things we do advise is that they choose a few extracurricular activities their child enjoys because that will help them to connect with different teachers, students from different year groups, and will help to broaden their circle really quite quickly when they first join the community. The ones you'll notice that are in bold are the ones that the children tell us the most, and that's to have fun and make friends. Every child wants to have some dedicated time where they can be with friends and really enjoy themselves because when we have fun, then the learning comes naturally and easily. A little bit about the activities program at Bangkok Patana, and I'm sure I've already heard from Bangkok Prep, their great presentation just then. They are the same, and many of our um, schools featured today, I'm sure, will be similar. Um, at Bangkok Patana, we have a whopping 500 activities offered each week, and we're really proud of the next statistic, and that's that 94% of our students do three or more ECAs a week. Um, these are offered before school, at lunch times, and after school, and even on Saturday mornings. So lots of different time things to suit different families. 
our ECA programs are ranged into four blocks of approximately eight weeks long. And the thinking around that is that that gives children a long enough period to really explore something, but not so long that they're locked in for the whole year and then they may not be free to um, dabble and really develop their interests broadly. We do administer our program uh, via a bespoke software system. And one of the things that's really great is it links in with our transport and billing so that students can get home safely after their ECAs. And a really big feature is that it's preferences based, not first in first serve. So it's very fair and transparent and ensures that um, parents can navigate it with ease and get their children signed up um, for a range of activities each week. A great activities program, if you're looking at a school, is very broad based because not every child is going to want to be in a sports team. Not every child's going to want to be in an orchestra. So this is how we organize our activities at Bangkok Patana. We have them uh, aligned with our key values as a school. So well-being, learning and global citizenship. And you can see there from the slide the different activities that then fall within the different categories. What are our most popular ECAs? Um, well, the uh, sports obviously feature highly because it's a great chance to you know, break outside and get involved in teams with friends. So football, swimming, tennis, gymnastics, and dance feature really highly in our program. We actually have full-time year-round academies with professional staff employed by the school to run those activities. Other ones which are really trending at the moment is surf skating, uh, chess is always very popular, cooking and baking, uh, taekwondo and golf are really popular. Um, in our secondary uh, area, things like our Model United Nations program and our orchestras, cries and bands are also really, really popular. One that's just taking off lately is our cycling skills ECA. Um, a lot of our students grow up in condos and uh, especially during the pandemic have not necessarily had that time to really get outside safely on the road and uh, learn to ride a bike. So that ECA is also going from strength to strength at the moment and setting children up for uh, a lovely hobby in the future. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, and I'm happy to take any questions either about the program at Patana, but also more broadly about sports and activities in general. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Um, you know, I will lead off the questions here. I'm just right now we don't have any comments in there or any, any particular questions from our, from our audience. But do you find that any one area of ECAs are more hotly contested than others? And here's the reason why. Here's the reason why I ask it, Cindy. Yeah. It's because something that my, you know, as a parent, I know that as so many other people struggle with this. You know, there's that, there's that window of opportunity where, like, okay, you have to sign up for ECAs at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, and you know, then you know, it's like if you don't get in within 30 seconds of the of the server, your child will kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's about like, is there any way to mitigate that? Is there is there any is there any way that we can can work around that? Yeah, so um, there's definitely always a collection of ECAs that have that real demand around them. For us, it's often things like rock climbing. Mm -hmm. um, that's really popular. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that we manage it in our school is that we have what's called a preferences based sign up. So you go into an online system and you select the ECAs you'd like and you have to assign a preference. So mm -hmm. this is my first choice. This is my second choice. This is my third. And it's not first in, first served. Uh, so the parents have about a five day window to go in and allocate those preferences, hopefully while sitting at home and chatting to their child about what they'd like to do. And then uh, the system closes and we use quite a sophisticated algorithm to try and allocate those ECAs out fairly. So that's how we're approaching it. Uh, there are still occasions where there are more first choices than there are places available in some ECAs. And that's when we use that data to say, hey, we need another coach for this sport or sure. we really need to bring on board another similar ECA to this because it's trending right now. And it is, it goes in trends, you know, the things that are popular outside of school filter in and, and we try and offer those to meet that demand, like the surf skating right now. You go around Bangkok, you see loads of people on skateboards. So totally obviously not. kids want to yeah, learn that. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, Joe Rego asks, if your school has to go online uh, as this has happened, you know, hybrid is now just something we all are, are, are getting used to is the new normal. Um, if you do go online, how do you manage the ECA program? Is it just all canceled? Is there some other highway? Like, how does it work? 
Yep. So if we have a whole school closure, um, I spoke briefly in my presentation about how we have uh, five full time academies um, mm -hmm. with year round dedicated staff. So what we do is we redeploy those staff and they offer an ECA program after school every day that's online, uh, live lessons. Um, and we put out a little bit like a gym timetable that you might mm -hmm. see if you joined up with the gym and it will have dancing and cooking and tennis and football skills and all sorts of things. And students can dial in using our online platform, which is MS Teams, and they can participate live in those extracurricular activities. There's no sign up required or any fee levied. It's just a service that we offer. And we were we sort of designed the program and thought, oh, we might get 20 or 30 kids who come along. And we were absolutely flabbergasted when more than 100 kids are logging in each afternoon to, you know, do some smoothie making or some mm. fun dance with Disney and things like that. So that's how we approach a whole school closure. Um, if we have students that are isolated and out for short periods while we at the rest of the school still open, then we have a range of online activities that they can access with lots of different ideas um, and sort of pre-recorded activities that they can tap into as well. Thanks. And I, I, it's amazing how quickly this time goes by. Um, you know, right. so I, got, I have one, I have one, one more question for you here before we move on to our next school, which is Brighton. Um, and I'm going to just absolutely destroy this name, but I, and I apologize. Oluwatapo Oki Sanusi is asking, "What ECAs do you have at lunch breaks? Considering the time in, that the children are participating at time in Patanet, are, are there ECAs during lunch breaks?" So we do have a collection of ECAs at lunch breaks. They tend to be our community action teams, which is a subset of ECAs, which are student led clubs um, around uh, doing community work. So it's a perfect time for them to grab a quick bite for lunch or bring it along and then sit and meet as students and plan their initiatives. So that's things like our smile club who raise funds to um, do cleft palate repair on students here in Thailand, um, things like Amnesty International, our Student Environmental Committee. Um, so that time slot is commonly used by groups like that, who um, maybe are in sports teams or in the orchestra and things after school, it gives a different time slot for them to meet as community action teams and plan their next initiative. Super cool. Mrs. Cindy Adair, who you are, the Assistant Principal of Sports and Activities at Patna, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us about ECAs today. There are two questions that are in the chat here in Facebook and and, um, and YouTube. If you wouldn't mind answering those in the chat, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, and also to remind, to remind everybody, not only are we recording this so that you can catch it up later, but also if you have additional questions as well, throw them in the chat there. Cindy's here. The other schools are here, you know, and, and the schools that are coming up are also paying attention as well. So please um, address your questions and, and we'll make sure they, they get answered. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys.